was kind enough to let me take home this 2021 439 BMW X-Drive. Unfortunately, I will not be doing donuts in the snow. I will not be accelerating very fast in this, but I will be giving you a review on the comparison of the two. Overall, driving this car is very similar to my 2018 430i, but there are definitely some differences. The suspension feels much more refined. It feels like it handles the bumps a lot better. It is very stiff still. The steering is exactly the same, but it just feels more refined. With the exterior changing, the interior obviously changed as well. There are a lot of features in here that make the car feel much more modern. For instance, there's only buttons to change the headlights, fog lights, running lights, etc. Which, this feels much better than turning a dial. The gauge cluster, as you can see, is fully digital now, which is just insane. It looks so good. You feel completely different looking down at this than you do an analog gauge cluster. The backup camera on this car has changed quite a bit. There's a lot wider view of your surroundings behind you, and as you can imagine, that helps a lot. My car has 5% tint on it, so when I back up, I pretty much solely rely on the camera, which they suggest, the manufacturer suggests not to rely solely on that, but I have 5% tint. It's extremely hard to back out of my driveway at night. So having this wider view on here, that's definitely a bonus. Where you place your drinks now has changed. Before, in the old one, it is a little sliding door. This now, you push down and it pops and retracts back. Also has a charging pad for your phone, which is incredible because I have wireless charging, but I've never even used it before in my life. The old shifter, in my opinion, has a great feel. It's literally designed to just fit perfectly in your hand and the park button and all that's placed really well. And then I got into here, and this feels so much better. So much better. Still got the button on the side, but it's a lot larger, and it, it just, I don't know, it just has a different feel. One thing I strongly dislike about this car is the paddle shifters. They don't have that same feel that they used to have, which is heavy and smooth, just like really well-made good material. These are like, part plastic, part metal, or just coated in what looks like, you know, some kind of reflective shiny aluminum. And they just don't feel as good. They feel plastic and kind of cheap. So that's a downfall on this car. Not a deal breaker, but it could have been better. The LED lighting in the car has gotten a lot better looking. In my car, it's kind of hidden and tucked up in there and it shines down through. This just has a really consistent glow and it's got this nice like translucent plastic over it. And you can change it to about, I don't know, there's probably eight colors. You can also do a different color down there than up here. So you can have two different colors. Moving on to the exterior of the car. A lot of stuff has changed. So visually the body is completely different. They ditched the small fender accent for this nice little rolled metal section, which I think looks great, but at the same time, I kind of like that accent before. And I understand as times change, cars change, and the body of this car has changed very dramatically. We've lost that body line that BMW has kept since, gosh, I think the 70s, 80s which that line distinguishes a BMW from anything else to me. The tail lights on this car, definitely, definitely a good upgrade. This reminds me a lot of the M850. It's like a miniature version of that. There's also this little plastic non-functional vent on the rear bumper, which I think looks good, but I hate the fact that it's non-functional. We also need to touch base on the elephant in the room, which is this massive grill. A lot of people hate the new grills. Personally, I enjoy them. The headlights have gotten a lot more elaborate with lots of different bits and pieces inside of them.
It is on this car. Beautiful. One thing that bugs me about this car, with it being a coupe, there's pretty much only one way to get the seat to go forward. And they move the placement of the pole handle and this pillar kind of gets in the way and you gotta reach all the way back here. It's super awkward. That I can do without. I'm not entirely sure BMW's intentions with this, but when the doors open, the LED flashes red. I don't know if that's a safety feature or if that is just there to let you know your door is open. The door handles on this car, I'm also not a fan of. This round, odd indent where the door handle is, it's just not good looking. It doesn't look as good as the old BMW door handles do. This little entry light that comes on when your door is open is so cool in my opinion. It kind of follows through into the dome light, which it just gives it a luxurious extra feel. The door handles and lock and unlock button remind me a lot of a Lamborghini Urus. Very, very good looking. Even down to the vents, have this very futuristic look to them. Very modern, very sleek, but also very aggressive. I mean, I'm talking about a vent right now, and I'm calling it aggressive. Good job, BMW. The sunshade is no longer manual, it is automatic. It's mechanically powered, which is kind of a cool feature, but I've seen these fail a lot and the headliners rip down because it's such a snug fit. So I don't know how I feel about that exactly. Another thing that I noticed is when you go to pop the sunroof open, since it doesn't have these little vents right here like mine does, it opens it a crack for you. And that's when the sunroof is in this position, just venting slightly. I'm a little dissatisfied with the chrome around the emblem. It's a little bit too bulky and big, and this is kind of a sleek and small car and I don't think it really needs that accent, maybe on like a five or a seven series, but I consider it more sporty than I do luxurious. So in my opinion, that should go. The exhaust went from a round straight tip to a slanted rolled tip. I, I think it looks good. It complements the rear bumper. It sits flush on an angle. I like it. They even changed the tow hook cover shape. <laughs> it's completely different than it was before and I don't really know if I like that. It doesn't have symmetry. If you cut that in half, it's asymmetrical. I don't know how I feel about that. These are just small little details that I'm noticing in comparison to mine. Now that's not a big deal to a lot of people, but I notice it, so I'm going to mention it. The infotainment has gotten a lot better. It has a way better setup. It's touchscreen as well as you have, you know, the same knob that you had before. So I'm gonna show you some of the different lighting options they have in here. Let's see, how did I get to it before? Interior lighting, there we go. So right now I have it as blue. So here is blue and white, which like I said before, it splits the two up. So you've got blue down there and then white up top. There's green, lilac, there's also a bronze up top, which I saw, an orange. I think the orange looks the best because it matches the rest of the buttons. I'm not sure what you want to call this. The seatbelt helper, the seatbelt guide. If you watched my last video on the 2018 430i, it doesn't have this slot. It's just a little hook and it kind of grasps it and push it in this make sure that it never fails, which I can appreciate that. 
It looks a little goofy, but it's all about function. I did not mention this in my previous video reviewing my 430i, the 2018 model, but there's the owner's manual on the infotainment. Long pause. Yes. That's amazing. Want to know why? Because a lot of times you get a car and it doesn't have it. Somebody threw it out, put it in the room, whatever, it's gone. You want to know the coolant capacity. You want to know the oil capacity. You want to know this, that, the other. Boom, right there in your car. You don't have to go searching. You don't have to hit Google up. You have it. As I mentioned before, I'm not doing anything wild in this car, but I will give you a little sound clip of what the turbo sounds like under load. And that sounds amazing. My car is definitely way more toned down. I don't know if they changed the blow-off valve from recirculating to vent to atmosphere. I don't know what they did, or if the turbo's bigger, spool's different. It's mapped differently. I really couldn't tell you, but it just sounds so much better. The Oakland University speed bump from hell. Many bumpers have met their fate here, their demise. Not today, 